And good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a 4C conference webinar series. Uh, we'll be doing about 100 webinars between now and August 18th to the 20th, which we are happy to announce. Just yesterday, uh, we secured the exact dates with the Hilton August 18th to the 20th. Uh, that's a uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, we've secured those dates. Uh, we chose those dates because a lot of industry still has travel bans running through the end of the second quarter. So we had to put it in the third quarter <clears throat> because um, the exhibitors and sponsors have, have been pretty clear they want an in-person conference. And um, by August, the vaccine should have been rolled out uh, combined with the herd immunity. So the travel ban should be lifted by August. Uh, we apologize for having to move that conference back from February to August, but uh, obviously that's uh, out of our control uh, given the COVID uh, situation. So we'll be doing a series of webinars. This is about the 10th webinar. We'll have about 90 more over the next uh, six months. Uh, we'll, the webinar series will run through the end of June. We have about 500 historical presentations uh, from the 4C conference. We have selected <clears throat> about the 100 most popular uh, presentations uh, to include in the webinar series. Uh, today's webinar is uh, Gary Strahan of ICI Cameras. Uh, headquartered in Beaumont, Texas. Uh, known Gary for many years. Uh, we work with Gary uh, uh, to promote uh, products, uh, these uh, drones and cameras um, for sales in China. Uh, I am a huge believer in uh, the drones and the cameras. Uh, uh, as part of the webinar series, uh, Satellitics and GHG Sat or um, uh, webinars number two and three. And in those webinars, uh, they talked about the satellites that can now see hydrocarbon emissions. And I believe the future of our industry will be that these satellites uh, see hydrocarbon emissions that uh, companies uh, then are notified of changes in the emissions and that these uh, drones with cameras uh, then put eyes on that leak and then notify the uh, chemical plant or refinery staff. Uh, that's something that at one point we would have thought was maybe, you know, 2030 or 2040. I think that will be more like 2022, 2023. Uh, all of the technology is there. It's really just getting the operations maintenance uh, uh, aware of this technology and capability and also adjusting the regulatory structure uh, to accommodate what um, is really the future of uh, uh, control of emissions at um, industrial facilities. Uh, Gary's product <clears throat> is um, one of the leading products. Uh, we are very proud to have associated with ICI. The 4C conference is associated with ICI uh, for the last uh, 10 years since the beginning of the conference. And uh, uh, Gary was very fundamental in the development of uh, all of these technologies and continues to be on the cutting edge of the uh, uh, drones, drone cameras. <clears throat> if you get a chance to meet Gary at 4C, um, or meet his staff. One of his staff is a drone racer. He races drones. 
So the drones that you're getting there from ICI are, uh, uh, they, they know a thing or two about drones. And the cameras, uh, of course, they've been instrumental in developing uh, the technology around these cameras uh, since the inception of the, of the uh, OGI technology. So without further ado, I'll introduce Gary. Uh, Gary, take it away. Yeah, so uh, very nice to meet you and thank you, Steve. Uh, we enjoy attending and I really look forward to attending the conference in August. I think all of us look forward to, you know, getting back to some normalcy. Uh, of course, in the infrared world, our businesses exploded uh, in this year. Uh, and when you mentioned satellites, we have cameras on satellites. Uh, the only disadvantage of a satellite is uh, yeah, you know, the, the 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 camera systems that go on satellites are impacted by weather, you know, so bad weather, rain, storms, all those things, they can't they can't, you know, see through that. The we, we the reason I know we we there's 120 approximately 126 earth observing satellites and uh, we have cameras on on a number of those satellites. We also have cameras for example over in in, uh, in Alabama with NASA to measure the temperature of their their latest uh, nuclear electric engine. Uh, I've been interviewed multiple times this year. Uh, one the last time in August by Andrew Evers, who's a producer out in San Francisco on CNBC. Uh, FLIR was on there as well too. I was with uh, Agima Infrared Systems. We bought Informatrix. We merged with FLIR. Uh, to create a very large organization, which FLIR was just acquired on Monday by Teledyne by for $8 billion. Uh, that, that literally just happened. Uh, so our company has grown pretty dramatically. Uh, my background, uh, I, uh, I, I'm from Beaumont, Texas. That's why our, our main office is there. We actually manufacture infrared cameras there, both cooled and uncooled. Uh, we package systems together on drones and UAVs. Uh, we also have offices now in other countries. We've uh, acquired a couple of other companies this year as we just continue to grow. Uh, we're going to continue to grow, and uh, and we are uh, very. Uh, perf I, I would say we're we're one of the market leaders in the world uh, in optical gas imaging uh, from a drone. Uh, I was involved in the first handheld systems. Uh, David Furry, Jeff Lake. Uh, uh, indigo systems, uh, uh, putting cold filters into the cameras to uh, to actually, you know, uh, see these see these uh, gas leaks. Uh, the the only disadvantage of an optical gas imaging camera is 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 the physical size of the leak uh, that you can actually see. Uh, uh, you, there there are some limitations there. Weather uh, can, can impact it. Uh, there's a few different things can impact it. That's why we we actually take uh, lasers, uh, uh, tunable diode laser absorption spectrometers, and we integrate those onto our uh, onto our drones and UAVs, where we can measure down to uh, one part per million uh, of, uh, of, of of various gases. So uh, we spent a lot of time to make the systems uh, very easily easily flyable. And, and user friendly, because in the end, what does a customer want to see? If you're working out in a plant or facility, you whether you're hiring a third party to come in and uh, and 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 fly your stuff, or you're going to become an owner, or you're an end user of the equipment. The objective is to is is eventually to have the data, you know, to have the data and say I've got this component at this location and it's leaking. So, in this paper, as I say right here, I'll discuss UAVs, uh, drones, uh, uses of sensors and in inspection of industrial facilities, petrochemical plants, pipelines, buildings, agriculture, highway bridges, gas leaks, uh, lakes and rivers. You know, so it's uh, it's uh, there's all different types of environmental applications uh, for these drones and sensors, and it's uh, it's uh, it's been our our objective to marry multiple sensors together to create a, a, a really great product and to create a very user friendly product that makes uh, that makes it very easy for an operator, somebody uh, that's bought a a uh, DJI Phantom or some or some of these UAVs to to pick them up and go fly them. In other words, the drone that you see right there, uh, some of these larger eight rotor drones and, and, and even some larger ones. I mean, we have some fixed wing stuff that can fly out to 75 miles out. 
uh, the the antennas for those are very expensive, but they're they're fast and they can they can cover a lot of ground. So it's uh, it, just as we have cameras on satellites, we have cameras in helicopters, fixed wing aircraft, uh, all of those systems, as well as hand handheld. Uh, uh, cameras and lasers and, and different devices that we manufacture right in uh, Beaumont, Texas. So over the past 10 years, there's many different types of, of drones that have been begin to fill the, the national airspace. Uh, it's been somewhat slowed up because of COVID and because of some impact, you know, to the oil industry, you know, because of COVID. But just like I said, I'm really glad that, that we're going to get, uh, uh, you know, some of these conferences back going. And so, you know, part of what we've done with the cameras is we were a medical device manufacturer. Uh, we, we've had our FDA clearance since 2008. And so we, we put cameras in buildings and uh, you'll see our systems. If you, if you watch Meet, Meet, Meet Christine, there's actually a, uh, uh, an Amazon commercial that shows our cameras. We were on 60 Minutes uh, with our cameras. Uh, we're actually the only company right now in the United States. Our cameras are in every airport in Hawaii. Uh, to to so if you land in Hawaii to to go visit the islands, you're going to get imaged when you get off the airplane. You're also going to get imaged when you get on the airplane. Uh, Hawaii is actually the only besides Southwest Airlines and Love Field are the only uh, airports in the United States where there are cameras fixed mounted. But uh, there's a bill in the Senate and the House where you're going to see those become these passive cameras just become regular. It's like it's uh, uh, it's 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 going to become standard operating uh, procedure in, in airports in, in the United States in the future, we believe. And so we're we're a leader in, in there as well. But uh, uh, the FAA uh, initially published Part 333, allowed several thousand companies in the U.S. to become UAS pilots. Now they have Part 107 uh, came out in 2016, four years ago, which allows uh, allows you to get your pilot's license. So what? that's what part 107 is. I'm a pilot, guys. I've been flying uh, air, airplanes since I was 15 years old. I was fortunate enough at my high school in Beaumont, we had an aerospace aviation class. Uh, so before I got my driver's license, when I was 15, I actually got to talk about sweaty palms. I went out to the airport and actually got to fly a Cessna. And now we're integrating cameras uh, you know, onto fixed wing aircraft, helicopters, and the drones like you see uh, uh, in the image. So uh, uh, new rules uh, from non-hobbyists allow, allow uh, UAS or, 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 or people to fly drones that weigh less than 55 pounds. So if you're interested in getting into this business, uh, we can absolutely help you do that. There's a, a, a huge forecast, you know, uh, in, in, in some, some of this is a little bit uh, older data, but but AeroVironment is actually the largest uh, U.S. drone manufacturer, $280 million in 2017. Uh, uh, and they, uh, they're, they're, but they're, they're, most of the drones that they manufacture out in California are primarily used in the military uh, world. And, and in fact, you know, most of the large fixed wing drones, and what I mean by fixed wing is, is uh, there's rotorcraft, you know, the ones that operate like a helicopter, and then there's fixed wing that fly like a normal airplane. The fixed wing aircraft move pretty quickly, and so you have to have big antennas uh, to be able to control those, and you have to get uh, there's rules that 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 uh, are called BVLOS. That's beyond visual line of sight. Uh, right now, based on on FAA Federal Aviation uh, Administration rules, you actually have to f be able to see the drone, and 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 you have to be able to see it unaided. In other words, you can't have a pair of binoculars and be looking out there with it. You can only fly it out as far as you can see it, unless you get a waiver from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration to allow you to fly BVLOS, which is beyond visual uh, line of sight. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the drone market, you know, is, is absolutely huge. I put some numbers up here, uh, uh, and uh, you can see uh, for infrastructure, you know, uh, 45, and this is in billions of dollars, guys, uh, the uh, infrastructure 45.2, ag, uh, 32.4 billion transportation 13 you know all the way down to mining and uh, so yes they're they're imaging mining op operations telecommunication uh, bearing fiber cable uh, flying uh, power lines in the electrical industry 
uh, the, the, the fire that occurred with Pacific Gas Electric. Uh, we actually have what's called a Corona camera. It's a daytime ultraviolet camera, and on your high voltage power lines, the, it, it, uh, when you have a, a just like a broken wire uh, a, or a broken strand, it creates what we call Corona. It's uh, ultraviolet radiation that can't be see seen with an infrared camera or visible camera, so we actually integrate a UV camera uh, onto the drone and we can fly these high voltage wires. What happened is with, with Pacific Gas Electric a couple of years ago in, in Paradise, California, uh, the, the, the line, the high, the, the five, the, uh, uh, it was uh, a, a high voltage power line, which typically they're 500,000 volts down to about uh, uh, 90,000 volts, uh, bringing the power, the transmission line then to step down transformers to bring power to different manufacturing facilities and people's homes. So we, they step up the power, they put it over the transmission line, and we can actually see this corona. Uh, this, this, uh, and, and when corona, it's, it's not like corona cerveza, like you go down to Mexico and you have a corona. It's, it's, uh, it's actually, it emits ultraviolet light that can't be seen with the human eye. It's below the visible spectrum. And we actually, uh, the, the, this, this light is emitted as a specific wavelength. And in the presence of nitrogen, it creates a small amount of nitric acid, which will actually eat away on the line over a period of time. And, and that, what can happen then is over, over years of that, that corrosion uh, taking place, uh, and and, this, and this, this UV light being emitted is that line can part and then fall to the forest floor like happened out in, in California and uh, then uh, catch the forest floor on fire, which burned down the city of Paradise and, and took 51 human beings' lives and then uh, 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 got PG&E, filed bankruptcy, a multi-billion dollar bankruptcy, which they've just recently come out of that, that bankruptcy. So we, besides having the cameras for optical gas imaging, we can see corona, which actually does uh, impact the environment too, because in the process of creating that nitric acid, it also emits ozone, okay? And ozone is, uh, is actually very detrimental, and I have a whole paper on, on, on UV and ozone uh, 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 being emitted by, by these, uh, by these uh, systems. The other gases that we can see are sulfur hexafluoride. Uh, th those are also used by electric utility. It's also uh, it ha has about 20,000, uh, more than 20,000 time harmful effect than CO2. Uh, you'll notice in a lot of substations that you see now, instead of having these big oil field transformers, they'll actually have these smaller transformers that are no longer oil field, oil, oil field but they're filled with SF6 gas, and that S sulfur hexafluoride prevents arcing. That's why you have oil field transformers, is to prevent arcing, because you're, 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 you're typically either stepping up or stepping down power inside these oil field transformers, and so we uh, fill the tra these transformers, the electric utilities do, with sulfur hexafluoride gas to prevent this arcing from happening. And, uh, and, the, and so you're seeing a lot of these transformers be replaced. So security industry, media and entertainment, a lot of films and TV movies that you watch. Uh, we've sold many cameras uh, into, into that industry. Of course, most people are familiar with the movie Predator, where infrared was, was used in the movie Predator. Uh, uh, as you can see, top 20 drone companies. Uh, the, the, the biggest is Parrot in France. DJI uh, is, is, is big, but in, in the United States, uh, because of our issues with China, DJI uh, is, is, is actually being pushed out by, by other U.S. manufacturers. And you can see some of these U.S. manufacturers. 3D, uh, 3DR, 3D Robotics has, has actually kind of gotten pushed out by DJI and became more of a software company, so they're really not a hardware manufacturer. But you've got a lot of there are a dozen new uh, drone manufacturers in the United States that are moving, and we're working with a lot of those guys to integrate our cameras onto, onto their systems. But you can get an idea that this globally in billions of dollars estimated in the drone environment is going up. So we believe uh, sensors used today for ground-based inspections have a place in inspecting hard-to-access locations that required scaffolding or rope access. Uh, uh, the fact is they save time and money, and we all know manpower uh, is, is 
is is a is is a cost. There's a cost of manpower. So we believe making these sensors easy to use and fly uh, for DJI's flight controller like the A3 and its predecessor and all the other manufacturers, we integrate our cameras onto onto and integrate them in with various flight controllers to where just like you're playing a video game, it's literally that easy, you know, and the cameras, uh, you know, they take off, they'll, they'll stop unless you move them. They'll also, if they begin to lose power, they automatically come back home and land. So uh, the quality of the UAVs and the ability to fly them and the battery technology is getting a lot better for the battery powered uh, ones, but there's also uh, gas powered ones, there's, there's hydrogen powered ones, and there's all different types of, of drones. And this business is just going to uh, continue to grow. Uh, so uh, most, uh, most uh, of the UAVs uh, today are, are first person view, like a radio controller, RC or, or airplanes, uh, uh, we put all different types of, of sensors from CMOS sensors, which stands for complementary metal uh, uh, metal oxide semiconductor, to microbolometer based cameras. Uh, like FLIR, we have an uncooled optical gas imaging camera that can actually see methane, propane, butane. The, the disadvantage of those is they're not uh, 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 qualified or approved for quad OA use because uh, these uncooled microbolometer based cameras will never be as sensitive as, uh, as as a cooled camera. So what I mean by cooled camera for those guys, for those of you who, who don't understand, there there's uh, a, a cryogenic cooler uh, that, that actually has a little miniature helium compressor in it that cryogenically cools the sensor in the camera down to minus 327 degrees Fahrenheit. So for you guys that are familiar, or minus 196 C, which is the same temperature as liquid nitrogen. So we cryogenically cool the sensor inside a vacuum. We put a filter in front of it that filters out uh, and allows us to see uh, gas, hydrocarbon gases like propane, butane, uh, uh, methane, you know, and, and all different types of hydrocarbons. We also, uh, like I said, we have very specific lasers that are tuned to see specific gases, so then we can quantify it. We can not only see the gas leak, but then we can actually quantify the gas and we can actually measure uh, PPMs, as I'm going to show you. So I, I just put this up here to show uh, uh, you know, different things. And here's some good data. There's almost as many cell phone subscriptions, 6.8 billion, as there are people on the earth, which is uh, over 7 billion. Okay. And it took about 20 years for that to happen. You know, almost all of us uh, own these, these cell phone cameras. So your, your, the camera in your cell phone actually uses a CMOS uh, type sensor. And a lot of those are made by Sony and other manufacturers. Uncooled uh, microbolometers, uh, they actually have pixels, and this is an image of a pixel from a microbolometer, and as radiation strikes uh, this pixel, and the very first uh, camera, Agima, I worked with Agima infra Infrared uh, Systems over in Dander in Sweden. I was a manager, guys. I came from the petrochemical industry for Mobile Oil Corporation. I helped wrote, write all of Mobile's non-destructive testing procedures. I don't just teach and in, in manufacture infrared cameras. I teach... Uh, uh, radiography or X-ray, ultrasonics, mag particle, liquid penetrant. Uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, also lead detection systems uh, that that actually uh, now there's ultrasonic imaging systems that can actually see leaks as well too. And we're working with that technology to integrate that technology onto drones as well too. So lots of exciting stuff happening. The original cost back in 1997, I say right here in the middle of this paragraph of of one 320 by 240 uncooled camera was $57,995. So in a little over 20 years, we've driven that the, the prices of the cameras down to now where you have microbolometer based cameras, you can plug in a, a cellular telephone and buy for about $300. You know, so we have uh, very low cost systems, but those systems don't see gas leaks. A lot of people think that they can take a normal visible camera or one of these low cost microbolometer cameras and go see gas. It's just not going to happen, guys. Uh, the The technology behind developing these systems that can see these gas leaks is uh, is 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 quite amazing. So uh, 
It, with the electromagnetic spectrum uh, allows us to see all different wavelengths from radio waves all the way out to gamma radiation. Uh, the cameras that we primarily build are in the, are in the infrared spectrum. Uh, uh, in the, the, so the, the visible spectrum that we see right here goes from 0.38 to 0.72 microns, or that's 380 to 720 nanometers. That's what we see with the human eye. If you've heard the term RGB, like red, green, blue, uh, that is the, the spectrum that our eyes see. And we have uh, violet, in the, and so anything below the violet or the purple spectrum, and then out to the red, that's where UV comes from. Ultraviolet is below violet, and infrared is beyond red. So we can see, uh, uh, we, we, we build cameras that see in these different spectrums uh, that, that's beyond what our eyes can see. And I may be, some of you guys may, that are listening may be aware of this, some of you may be uh, not, and that's why I want to want to cover that. So let's talk about some, some, some real world applications, you know. We have drones uh, for cameras to look, hog hunters, guys flying over fields where they're, these hogs are getting into their fields at night or deer, and they're just destroying their crops. You know, we can, we can actually see those things. Uh, office buildings. We, the, the bottom image is moisture. The white areas in the lower image is we can actually fly over this building and the white areas on this building are moisture in, in these flat roof buildings. So sometimes the way these large buildings are, are made with corrugated roofs, the area where the water is actually penetrating through the roof uh, is, is not where it's coming through your ceiling and leaking in through your office. So Typically, these types of inspections are done at night because water has a high specific capacitance. In other words, you, we get a hard rain. It rains on the roof. The water saturates through the roof and then goes through the barrier material. The sun comes down. The roof heats up so that water, that area that, that soaked into the insulation on the flat roof, it gets wet. It warms up Okay, from the sun. And then the sun goes down at night in those areas where those wet spots in the roof where, where the water's actually leaking into the roof, they actually become visible and those white spots are actually warm areas on the roof and we can see those with a drone. We can also walk on the roof with a handheld camera, although you want to be very careful about, about walking uh, uh, and, 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 and stepping backwards. There actually are thermographers using handheld systems that have backed off a roof and fell to their death. Uh, so uh, it's really good to get up and inspect the roof visually before you do this uh, uh, during the daytime, but flying at night, you can actually uh, 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 see these these warmer wet areas that you can then go on to repair. This is an AutoCAD drawing of uh, of, of a roof and looking for these uh, wet areas in the flat roof building. Some of the other applications uh, from drones is the the U.S. Uh, or, uh, different fish and game air, uh, groups. They will use them to count deer, you know, or hogs, or is some type of invasive species, or actually to find lost children. There's lots of applications. Uh, for the for the drones, the upper image on here, the AutoCAD are actually wet areas. So once we find these wet areas, we can give the that data to the building owners, and they know how much of the areas are wet. Do we need to rip off the whole roof and replace it, you know, or do we need to uh, or do we need to just uh, 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 repair it? You know, it's a lot uh, less costly many times just to repair wet areas than it is to rip off and completely re replace an entire roof. Another application uh, in what quantitative imaging is, is the cameras that we manufacture don't just see gas, they are radiometric. And what that means is that we can measure temperature at every pixel. And, and in order to do that, we have to correct for emissivity, distance, relative humidity, uh, convective cooling, background radiation, ambient temperature, and atmospheric conditions. You know, uh, and just the own instrument's characteristics, because uh, they, they, they create heat. Uh, what you're seeing in the image right here is, uh, is uh, uh, a leak, you know, where there's outfall going from a plant or facility into a lake or a river, 
okay, and because there's a difference in in uh, in 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 thermal capacitance, uh, in 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 heat from the water, we can actually see that warm water, or actually in some areas where people are actually dumping and they think they're hiding and dumping sewage into a lake or river, we can fly over and and actually detect those things. So the the EPA or Environmental Protection Agency, they actually use the cameras, you know, for applications like this, uh, you know, or will hire third party companies to actually do this. And then some of the plants and facilities or contractors, they will will do this too. So nuclear power plant cooling tower discharge. You can see here's stormwater uh, outfall. I mentioned the 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 high tension wire earlier. So you can you can add the white areas where the arrows are pointing or areas where there's a stormwater systems outfall actually going into a river. Uh, the bottom line is the 500,000 volt or 500 kV insulators, and the white insulators down at the bottom are failing. Uh, so we can find hot spots on these power lines. We can also use corona cameras and fly the lines themselves. So the, the structure in the right-hand corner of the bottom image is actually a transmission tower that's supporting those high-tension wires. We all have seen them in our office or along highways where they're running, bringing power uh, to various places. So not only can we uh, inspect the substations and find sulfur hexafluoride or SF6 gas leaks with the cameras, we can find hot spots on the power lines and we can use the ultraviolet or corona cameras to actually find the corona on the lines or the connections where the lines themselves are all spliced together. Uh, the the image this image here is a, is a, is a, is an is an image of a of a of a uh, an optical gas leak. Uh, you know, that, that we've seen like from valves or flanges or, or, or tapped holes, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in the images. And I'm not going to not going to play the video, but if I played the video, you could actually see the, the live gas leak uh, out in the oil fields. You can actually see this is a a video. Uh, one thing with this infrared camera, you can see where the liquid level is in this tank. Right. And uh, this is a thief hatch on the tank. And these thief hatches are notorious for for leaking, and there there are different designs now uh, for what's called quad OA. Some of you may or may not be familiar with quad OA, but in the oil field now, uh, the, the 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 there are actually quad OA requirements that require inspecting all of the the flanged and screwed and threaded components and all of these components in an oil field. So uh, let's say, for instance, out in the Bakken, out in West Texas, in the Permian Basin, uh, in, or in the in, in the Bakken up in North Dakota, in the in the Permian Basin out in West Texas, in Eagleford, and all these different areas, all of these owner operators typically are, are using or they're paying a third party person to do these OGI inspections. And what we're doing with the drones is we can launch because many times these wells are are on different people's property. In other words, they, they, you may have to cross through a cattle, uh, uh, you know, the, the cattle grate, or you may have a, a locked fence because there may be deer hunters that are actually leasing that land and they don't want you, they don't want you coming out there on the, on the land while they're out there, they're deer hunting. They typically don't want you flying drones over there either. Uh, so, so a lot of times during hunting season, they, they 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 don't allow uh, people to uh, or operators to get out there and fly, but you can launch from one location many times with a drone, and instead of having to go physically out to each well, you can hit multiple wells with one drone. So there's a lot of companies that are that are doing that. They actually are contracting uh, companies to actually fly uh, these different. Uh, uh, oil wells and oil pads, and look for the and look for these 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 various leaks. And so this is a just play this video here real quickly. And if you look very closely, you can see the gas. You can very subtly see it, but there's a gas leak coming right there from that from that 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 thief hatch. And the ground is white because it's warm. It's absorbing sun, so you can tell this is done in the summertime. And what we're doing there is, is in, in the image is actually changing the level and span you know, on that image. 
On the image down here at the bottom, this is a sulfur hexafluoride gas leak. And you can actually see this. This is on a transformer. When I mentioned SF6, uh, you can actually see that sulfur hexafluoride gas, which is a, which is a, uh, a detrimental to the environment about 20,000 times more than, than, than CO2. Uh, it's actually leaking. And this is also an expensive gas. So uh, the, the owner operators like to find these leaks because they don't want to have to keep, it's kind of like if you have a water leak at your house or your toilet's leaking or, or you got a leak in your gas line in your, your, in your, in your yard, you want to find that stuff personally and, 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 and uh, eliminate it. You know, we definitely don't want, uh, we, we, we don't, we don't want this stuff uh, uh, happening. Let me see if I can get that to stop. So right here, this is a sensitivity test that's required by the EPA. So it, it's a sensitivity test required for Quad OA. And I'll, I, I can play this video right here and you can watch. So this little area right here, uh, you're, you're actually going to see gas coming out of that. OK, so can you can you I don't know if you guys can see the gas. There it is. And so the cameras, optical gas imaging cameras, work in a normal mode, uh, which you can see the gas, but we put it in this high sensitivity mode, and you can see the movement that's created in the, in, in, in the background. We have our own uh, uh, the actual patented method, our own uh, high sensitivity mode that we use, and that's why the cars look kind of funky in the background, you know, as they, as they go by with our, with, our, uh, with our cameras. Here's one of our packages. This is an ICI Mirage. It's a very lightweight 640 by 512 optical gas imaging camera uh, integrated with a 20.6 megapixel Sony visible camera. And then this is a laser. This is a TDLAS. It's a tunable diode laser absorption spectrometer. And so all of this is integrated onto a gimbal that we can snap on to a multitude of different drones. So if you have your own your own uh, drone package, and this whole system right here uh, weighs a little over five pounds, right? So it's not it's not that heavy. We very specifically uh, built uh, the systems out of very lightweight materials, and this is of course just sitting on a, a counter. It's not mounted on the drone, but the reason that we use the laser is sometimes like on a buried pipeline, we'll fly over a buried pipeline and because you typically need about 500 parts per million uh, up to about 3000 parts per million with any optical gas imaging camera, regardless of the manufacturer. And this camera is a cooled camera. It actually has a, has, has a cryogenically cooled sensor in it with a filter that's actually welded inside this, uh, what we call a doer, uh, it, to, to, to actually see this gas leak. This laser, this tunable diode laser absorption spectrometer can identify down to one part per million methane. So we have cameras that can actually, actually measure uh, SF6 and measure other different types of gases and quantify them too. So not only can we see the gas leak, but we can actually use this laser and quantify it. And the advantage of having a laser on a buried pipeline is sometimes in a buried pipeline, it will take a while for that gas to migrate up through six feet of soil. But eventually it comes up through the soil and we fly over those areas and because it's difficult to find a leak in a buried pipeline. So that's an area that where we really excel at ICI is being able to identify those areas with a laser and then go out there with a, a backhoe or a trackhoe and dig it up and go, hey, look, there it is. And I actually have a number of different uh, images of those of those gases leaking where we've done exactly what I just described. Uh, this is an agricultural uh, uh, map, and the the red areas in the image or or, or green. Uh, uh, areas in the image. The red areas are hot or warmer, and and the green areas are cool. The yellow areas are a little bit warmer, but but uh, farmers uh, can actually get an idea based on the temperature of their fields of of what might be happening in the field. And areas we've actually been able to find bug infestations, underwatering, overwatering, and save farmers a lot of money in the amount of nitrogen that they have to spend to put in the soil, or maybe they're spraying the whole field with insecticide. 
where where maybe it's only one corner of that field where actually there's these spider mice or bugs or potato beetles that have actually gotten into that field and are actually killing their crop. So farmers are more and more adopting this technology to identify those types of things uh, with these drone or UAVs too. And I don't know if you call that an environmental application, but 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 using uh, less chemicals and less and less uh, uh, a product like that saves the farmers money and it helps the environment. Uh, this right here we have uh, NDVI. So we th these are things that are done with visible cameras like red, bling, green, blue, and near infrared. Uh, they just use uh, uh, they they see reflected light. They're not like the infrared cameras I just show you, which see emitted light. Uh, near infrared cameras. So what this is called is normalized difference vegetation index. And so as light heats hits a healthy plant, it creates photosynthesis. And we actually can use these cameras to identify a dead leaf, a stressed leaf, or a healthy leaf. So that's how farmers can use this technology to give them an idea uh, of what's going on. And, and these types of cameras even go back to being used with the old 35 millimeter Kodak film cameras, the U.S. For, uh, the Forest Service. We can identify areas that have been attacked by pine beetles or different types of, uh, of areas. And then uh, we've used the drones, of course, in a lot of the wildfires in California, Australia, and other areas in Canada and around the world to identify uh, those areas. We build some cameras that can see through the smoke and identify where the guys that are dropping water uh, uh, on, on the fires to actually put out these fires. But NDVI is uh, the use of a, a custom cameras that are, so you might hear the terms hyperspectral cameras, uh, that we're just merely breaking up the, the different colors with a normal visible light camera that goes out into the near infrared, and we're looking at that different reflected light to tell us something about the plants. In mineral and mining and geological mapping, uh, we actually, with, with, with uh, a group and some partners of ours, uh, discovered the last uh, 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 active uranium mine uh, uh, up in Canada. They still have not got the uranium uh, uh, out of the ground yet just because uh, it's naturally radioactive, but uh, uh, it was identified actually with, uh, with, with, with the, an aerial system actually out of a fixed wing airplane to identify these areas. So, so uh, mineral mining and geological mapping, we can actually do some aerial spectroscopy uh, using SWIR cameras and different wavelength cameras. It can give us an idea and tell us things that are going on either geologically under the ground, like, like a Yellowstone where you've got hot water coming to the surface, which is actually an ancient uh, volcano, you know, or, or we can image volcanoes or, or we can image and look for different uh, areas where there may potentially be mineral deposits. Uh, thermal uh, invisible seepage, uh, possible under, underground springs and possible sinkholes. You know, we see on TV today, you know, hey, this home, this person's stuff or, or in a street, a sinkhole uh, was was created. And so we actually can use different wavelength cameras to identify some of those things. We can use the cameras, flying them on a drone to identify some of these things early. And there's companies that actually go out and actually do this for a living. This is a bridge deck inspection. And the area in the bottom image, this thermal image right here, you actually don't see too much wrong here on the roadway, but, but it's beginning to spall or you'll get slippage in the asphalt. And these lines that you see are actually thermally from the structure underneath the bridge. So we can inspect br these bridge decks day or night. And right now, the way that they find this asphalt where it begins to slip before it starts to break up is they actually take a pickup truck and they have chains that they drag behind it. And the driver has his window rolled down and he listens for a hollow noise in the road. Well, with these drones, we can actually fly over these highways and roadways and bridges and identify these things early. Like in this next image, this is a manhole that actually got buried under the asphalt, right? 
It was a manhole that was buried. Imagine there's a manhole here, which it wasn't from this specific image. This one shows this, the, this spalling that's beginning to take effect. And, and so what they can do is uh, the Department of Transportation can identify some of these things early and say, hey, we need to send a crew out to actually go, go find some of these things. Uh, I put this image up. This we had have images uh, at space uh, or cameras at SpaceX, uh, at Orbital Sciences, a number of different companies. We have quite a few cameras over at NASA, uh, but this is an image of the International Space Station uh, taking from uh, STS-131. Uh, uh, this is a number of years ago, and so this is uh, the space shuttle going to dock with the International Space Station. So we 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 put cameras, you know, up in space to actually uh, uh, to image these the the condition of these solar panels and actually to to dock at night. Because if the shuttle pilot or the guy that's driving the SpaceX, uh, which is called the Dragon, and he's going to go dock over here, this is a manipulator arm, and he's going to dock here so that the astronauts can can crawl inside and live inside these spaces on the International Space Station, they need to be able to see at night. So it's kind of like driving a car for the pilot of these of the of the dragon and spacex or like the old space shuttle if they're if they if they they go on the dark side of the earth so it takes 92 minutes for these satellites or or for the shuttle to pass around the earth right 92 minutes so 46 minutes you're in the dark 46 minutes you're in the light 46 minutes you're in the dark 46 minutes you're in the light and so there are applications in space and so we have we have sensors on different satellites that look down at the earth just like uh, Steve had mentioned actually to look for 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 hydrocarbon leaks or or uh, millimeter wave imaging systems that can look through clouds to look at bathymetry to map the bottom of the of, of the world's oceans there's all kinds of applications from satellites and from drones, and that is the end of my of my uh, uh, presentation. So I don't know if you guys can hear me, uh, but uh, I'm back to the image. And any any questions, Steve? Are you there? Sorry, Gary. Gary was talking. I was talking. I was, talking I was talking muted. muted. So sorry. So sorry. Well, the, well, uh, there's some questions. Will the new camera have a motion detection option? Uh, motion detection option. Uh, you mean? I I'm trying to get my mind wrapped around what they mean by motion detection. Uh, yes, I mean it. It 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 detects motion right now. I mean the yes. The answer to that is yes. Uh, there's a question about wide angle thermal cameras. Why the what? The angle? A uh, 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 wide, wide angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have we have wide angle thermal cameras. We actually have uh, a group, Steve, and for everybody that's listening, uh, we actually uh, actually have a uh, a system that can that can map from the air a 50 mile swath of ground from a thousand feet AGL, a thousand feet above ground level, we can see and map, 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 map 50 miles. Uh, and it's actually done with the system that, that where it's set up in, a, in like a machine gun style, if you can, and, and it does it very rapidly and there's tons of data that's created there, but that's not done on a drone yet, but, but you can look for something like that happening in a drone in the, in the not too distant future. Now there's a question, do you need the property owner's permission to fly over their property? No, you don't actually. As long as you as long as you uh, you, you do not have to have the property owner's permission to just like a, like in an aircraft, an airplane, you don't have to have permission to uh, to fly over a, a property's owner owner's property right now. Uh, the, now, there are some flight rules that are laid out by the Federal Aviation Administration. All you have to do, and you'll learn about those if you take the Part 107 exam uh, about, about AGL and how high you can you have to fly when you're flying. But, but right now, it's kind of like I can go uh, – I'm a pilot, guys, and I have been since I was 15. I'm 61. I'll be 62 this year and been in this business a long time. 
and I can go jump in my airplane and and go fly over lots of people's property and I don't have to have permission. The only place where I need permission is if it's over a MOA, that, that is a military uh, uh, military base or access, and and I have to I have to let them know that I'm going to fly over that, and they'll say because th they might have aircraft if it's a if it's an air force base they might have aircraft that are doing operations and they don't want to fly want you flying over or they might have sensitive things that are going on uh, at at those lo locations and they don't want you flying over them so. That, that that's an area where you can't but over personal property the answer is 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 no yeah the, there's a I, I believe with the commercial with you also have to file a flight plan correct that's right you do yeah so you have to get the fa uh, uh but yeah you, if you're flying commercially you you'd want to register your flight plan the requirements for fa 107 there is a training class uh at the conference uh you don't get the certification from the training class you still have to go take the test and get the certification but there's a, a certification class at the at the conference and if you are flying at an industrial facility you're by definition flying for commercially commercial purposes um, so uh, the fa 107 certifications are required in every instance uh, so if, if you have drones at an industrial facility it's by a third party way. contractor, you want to make sure that that third party contractor has those 107 certifications as part of the process to admit those onto your property. Yeah, that, so 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 part as part of 107, you'll learn about airspace. There's type, you know, there's there's G airspace, E airspace. C and B airspace or like your large airports, but Steve's right. You actually, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be flying over uh, over a plant or a field or area, yeah, you 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 definitely have to go uh, uh, get permission. Yeah, typically though, like if you're if you're out in the middle of the desert, uh, there's lots of uh, of RC pilots and lots of pilots that get out and go go fly aircraft out in a in in. A, other airspace, you know, where th that's not populated, you know, where there's no homes or buildings or anything like that. Uh, but 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 if you're if you're flying commercially and you're getting paid to do it, the answer is like Steve said, absolutely yes. You need to fly a file a flight plan. The FAA wants to know that you're flying the drone over there, and you learn all of that in the Part 107 class. That 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 four C, like you said, they'll 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 actually have the class there, I, and that's in August, right, Steve? Correct, uh, August 18th to the 20th. Um, the, uh, the another question, and we're running up at 11:58, so we'll close here in the next few minutes. Uh, are the drones and cameras certified intrinsically safe? Uh, the, the the yes, uh, we 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 do have cameras that are intrinsically safe. Uh, they're. Uh, Yes, we do have cameras that are intrinsically safe. Not all the products that we manufacture, and no, not not all infrared cameras are intrinsically safe. But we do have an intrinsically safe or ATEX version of the camera, which means that you can actually, you know, carry it out to facility or use in the facility, you know, uh, uh, without a uh, uh, getting a. A, a, a permit but in most plants anyway you have you're going to have to get a work permit you're going to go in the control room if you're going into an industrial facility you're going to have to get a permit just to be on the unit and go out and go do work on the permit on on the on the unit how close do you have to be to detect a, a leak it depends on the lens you know uh the optic we i own an optics company guys we build uh Gosh, I just we built a lens for for 3M down in the cities that actually has 180 degree field of view, right? You know, so 180 degrees. It's like a, a, imagine a dome camera that sees everything, you know, uh, around you, mounted in the in the ceiling of a of a of a building. Uh, but but you can be, you know, we've got cameras on satellites. There's cameras on satellites that can see gas leaks, and some of those things are 500 miles up. But they also have big giant lenses on them right and very very expensive guys we're building uh a a camera right now and it this is confidential uh kind of confidential but it's actually a commercial contract has been put out there already but a 64 megapixel 
uh, infrared camera to be able uh, uh, to fly to fly a low a low Earth flying satellite to be able to identify a hypersonic rocket. And and I don't know if you've seen the latest news on China or Russia, but they actually have hypersonic rockets now. And so this is a a a, a defense project. Uh, we're building a. Uh, a, and I can't even give you details on the on on the camera system, but 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 there's a project going on. It's a it's a one year deal right now uh, to be able to build these uh, systems to go on low Earth orbiting uh, satellites to identify these rockets. I'll use that as a segue uh, to the the additional webinars. Uh, if you uh, watch as the webinars come out over the the next uh, couple of months uh, the initial webinars uh, were from the satellites viewing leaks uh, from the satellite level uh, then there will be uh, the drone level uh, and then uh, also the what uh, gary was referring to which is the low altitude uh, devices some of those are fixed wing. Some of them are sort of a combination, almost like between a satellite and a fixed wing. Yes. Uh, there's uh, they're high altitude for an airplane, low yeah. altitude for a satellite. Yeah. Um, so methane leaks can really be detected now, basically from the satellite to the ground through a series of different technologies, and. Uh, over the coming year to two years, I believe those technologies will start to integrate and, and talk and uh, move uh, response times to find big leaks and to fix those big leaks uh, uh, um, faster and faster over time. Um, and uh, yeah. Eventually, it's like you, like you said, Steve. Eventually, you need some boots on the ground. You find it. Somebody's got to go out and go identify it and, and fix it. And so, it's it's the that's an area where I feel like we excel is in reporting it. You know, and 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 we've made it easy to actually fly and then generate a generate a report. Which that's operators like our stuff, and that's why so many large companies you know that are in the in the in the business they have our stuff. You know, and. Uh, well, I, I traveled with with uh, uh, you know Steve's partner with 4C Scott Mueller uh, over to China, and we actually we, we we can't show any video from what we from what we found over there, but but we definitely you know we found some leaks over there, just like we find here in the United States. But uh, but it was a it was a great trip. Yes, the it is really interesting, and we very much appreciate uh, your presentation today. Uh, there was one question about uh, some of the new technology that ties into one of the que what the comment that you just made, which is, and, I, and I'm familiar with y'all's camera, of course, because we own a um, own one of your cameras uh, that we use to to do uh, leak identification. So occasionally, a city has an unknown source of odor, and they want to find that odor source and so we have one of Gary's cameras and, and uh, systems and then we'll wherever the odors reported we'll put that drone in the air and look for uh, hydrocarbon emissions. Uh, one very cool feature of your technology is that once you find a leak you can create a work order for that fairly quickly from the iPad from the screen uh, and I know uh, at least one of the folks here uh, on the call uh, has asked in the past about that, which is when you find a leak, how do you then integrate that into the operations and maintenance? Your system has made that fairly simple in that you click the button, it creates a work order, captures that video, captures the data, and can then be submitted into the work order system uh, so that the person that needs to do or the maintenance department can then know exactly where to go. They have an image of the leak already into the work order. Um, OK, with that, uh, we'll conclude today's webinar. And again, thank you very, very much for your time today, Gary, and, and taking your time. I know with COVID and all the fever screening, you're a very busy man these days. <laughs> Uh, so. I, I sincerely appreciate you having me, Steve, and, and the opportunity to 
you know, to share, you know, it's, uh, there are a lot of good companies, you know, uh, anyway, it's, uh, you know, we're, we've been, we've, we've been at it a long time now. And, uh, by, I, I love the science, you know, it's, it's, it's very cool stuff and there's more cool stuff coming too. So that's, it's always exciting, you know, it's, all, it's, it's, it's into this and on, on, on to the next cutting edge thing, right? I, I, it's fun actually. Yeah. Yeah, the technology around this area of infrared and uh, OGI and drones and satellites, it's really moving at just breakneck speed. Uh, and it's just so, so exciting and so rewarding. Uh, I guess I also want to thank you. Just uh, I, I know there's a, uh, a lot of concern by the public about climate change and, and uh, methane emissions and hydrocarbon emissions and you and the people on this call today on this webinar really on the front lines most of the emission reductions that occur in the world occur from environmental professionals uh, like everyone on this call finding leaks and and, and uh, fixing leaks every day and developing the technologies and doing the hard work so certainly uh, want to uh, show that appreciation also Okay, uh, with that, this concludes today's webinar. Thank you all very much for your time. We'll stop recording.